Hello, YouTube. Um, this is an article from the GodlightProductions.com forum. It's an article posted on the, that forum. Um, I got the video first from M from Canada One, and she just read this article. But since she was kind of hard to hear, I thought I would read it to you. It says, Can you bust this? Fukushima nuclear. Now, I found this to be scientifically reasonable article, though I hope to hell it's not true, but but I can't I can't debunk it and I thought it was important to share because um, I do think we're in a China syndrome scenario I just never looked at what that might mean um, can you bust this Fukushima nuclear there are only 35 days or less until the fuel sustains a full-scale fission criticality the boron which stops nuclear fission from occurring, will have exceeded its lifespan by this time. TEPCO had already made a request as of March to evacuate the reactors, though they are being forced to see it until the end by the Japanese government. God bless their souls, as it surely is a death mission. Their first death was reported on Friday. This was um, on May, I'm not sure, she put the video up May 22nd. Um, it was on May 21st. Their first, first death was reported on Friday, meaning that the situation is already well beyond cataclysmic. In all reality, the world's dirty, biggest dirty bomb will be released in no more than 35 days. TEPCO will likely evaluate the site. Will likely evacuate the site between the dates June 16th and June 28th. This is because boron is limited and can no longer sustain itself within the current settings, meaning the fuel will release amounts of neutrons in such excess that the boron in any quantity will now be unable to capture enough neutrons to stop a criticality. <laughs> in any quantity. Oh. At this time, neutrons will begin to react against atoms leading to a spike in temperatures exceeding any known cooling pro process. The fuel will then go core through the floor and reach the water table in no less than one to six hours. At that time, the fuel will both be released in atmospheric and oceanic form, plaguing Japan first and foremost. <laughs> I presume that over 100,000 to 10 million deaths will be attributed to that event alone. Japan will likely be forced to abandon the main island entirely within that time. I was watching um, some specials on Chernobyl, and they still have a pretty big evacuation zone and, and lots of um, deformities and illness and, and children and illness and deaths from 200 kilometers out, and supposedly only 3% of the fuel was released into the atmosphere on one reactor and um, there was an article today where in the World Nuclear News and I'm not sure of the exact amount but it's well over 70% uh, one girl said 94% of the fuel had been released <laughs> oh lord and this is uh, three reactors so far um, the continental United States will see the radiation within two days the radiation will sweep across the northwest as far north as Vancouver, Canada and as far south as New Mexico. The main areas to be astray from to be astray from to be gone from are Seattle through San Diego. The radiation will likely be 350 to 800 CPM. I'm not sure what that is. I mean CMP counts per minute. Oh lord. For your information, 200 counts per minute is when you should run indoors. This will continue as a global norm for at least two months. A global norm. At that time, reactors 5 and 6 will likely begin the path to China syndrome. If you are in a temporary fallout shelter by August, you should be planning to find a more permanent location to settle. 
Come November, the situation will likely start over again, now reaching a thousand counts per minute or more. Remember, this most of this radiation uh, has a half-life from which doesn't mean it disappears, just means it breaks down into other things, some of them radioactive. Has a half-life from 30 years, 200 and something thousand years. And there's over up to a thousand radioactive elements released. Um, I know at least 200, but I heard over a thousand. Uh, let's see. Come November, the situation will likely start over again, now reaching a thousand counts per minute or more. It will be anywhere up to a century for the initial radiation plumes to settle. This, that the radiation plumes to settle. Stop. Does that mean stop um, circulating in the jet stream, etc.? The 600,000 spent fuel rods, 600,000 spent fuel rods, will likely contaminate the entire planet, killing 45% or more of life on Earth. Once the reaction from neutrons has dwindled to 100 to 300 counts per minute internationally, the biological life forms will begin to emerge from the now very few uncontaminated portions of the planet. Though human DNA will likely be mutated and lifespans will be lowered to 20 to 44 years old in adult males and 25 to 50 years old in adult females. So in short, uncontrolled fission taking place inside the zirconium cells lead to a temperature spike inside the core fuel cells to reactor 1. Once the heat reached beyond boiling point, the tops of the fuel rods were exposed to the now present oxygen creating a violent reaction damaging the rods. This allowed the nuclear fuel pellets to escape their containment, dropping to the bottom of the reactor core. At that point, TEPCO then had no choice but to induce nitrogen into the reactor, as the melting of zirconium cre creates vast amounts of hydrogen. When the nitrogen settled the hydrogen, when the nitrogen settled the hydrogen, the remaining fuel collected in the bottom of the reactor, creating so much fission, the fuel melted through six feet of metal and concrete, landing in the reactor's basement. Now we're playing a dangerous waiting game. The GE reactor design has an emergency platform designed under the reactor's containment in the event a meltdown was to occur. The feature was built to not only prolong a meltdown, but also prevent fission as best it can. However, with the fuel heating up, you must consider that the water being employed with high levels of boron are doing little to nothing to prevent the fission from occurring, especially when the water leaks out so frickin' fast. <laughs> That being said, it's only going to be a short amount of time before the fuel likely surpasses the emergency system and makes its way into the water table. If it hadn't already. After that happens, soil and water will produce steam clouds that will contaminate vast areas of the planet, equaling the evacuation of the site. Game over. I assume this will be more like a nuclear fountain. Think of a geyser of radiation spewing into the atmosphere for the next 10 to a thousand years like they like they are now except 20 times worse one that will create temperatures that are unbearable to work near rising to 120 degrees Fahrenheit or greater it will contaminate everything its stream touches Fukushima would become a wasteland of contamination and Japan would need to extend the evacuation zone to at least 300 kilometers likely much more much much more area though a China syndrome has never happened, thus the math is beyond me. The contamination would spread in any nation, internationally and nationally, as it has now, but in much higher doses, likely 150 to 350 counts per minute. Note this is on the premise that only one reactor had reached criticality. Oh, hell. However, in the event there's an explosion, well, that's just bad, and I don't see how there's not. We would witness at least three to 300,000 tons of metric nuclear waste instantly turned into particle form. Oh, God. The release would do either one of three possible things. A really bad case scenario, assist reactors 2 through 6 in achieving, achieving full fusion criticality, leading to an apop 
apocalyptic amount of radiation such as in such high density that anyone that is in its path would perish by suffocation. The better and yet less likely scenario achieve a full level of de detonation while completely staying within a safe proximity of the other troubled reactors on site, which is very unlikely, somehow redirecting most of the initial mass over and into the ocean, thus spreading only minute levels of radiation globally. Then there's the worst case scenario. For your information, it's also a product of the result number one. If the fusion somehow took the full site, all six reactors, in one big kaboom, meaning a full fusion criticality, in layman terms, there will be absolutely nothing left. Ever witnessed a coronal mass ejection? Now, have you ever heard of the Earth creating one? If there were an explosion leading to a full fusion criticality, you would need to worry about flights or planning. That would register as an ELE, extinction level event. The explosion would likely blow the entire atmosphere off the planet. Food for thought, GE owns Comcast. Is this why USA Media is blackballing the story? I think so. The greatest lies ahead. Peeking into the future of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear physical intervention from national and international scientific communities. While TEPCO has now presented the roadmap of death, not one single qualified candidate has disclosed the truth, the true magnitude of the situation humanity is indeed facing today. Humanity is in fact in trouble. By the way, that does not disclude you. In short, we may very well be facing the extinction of mankind. This is not an understatement. Take that with the largest dose of reality you can afford. As I assure you, the situation is indeed beyond nuclear. While you may find comfort in the mainstream media's reluctance and lack in reporting this crisis, many peer networks are now taking to the web, scouring the Internet for evidence to bring you insight to this claim. What should be most concerning, in my opinion, is that there are, in fact, several working forces hindering this effort. These organizations are the same organizations held in accountability and disclosing the same information to you. Why? Take a look at these examples. EPA raises radiation levels. EPA stops monitoring radiation. Canada stops monitoring radiation. Japan raises health limits. FDA refuses proper monitoring of food safety. White House suppresses Internet communications. Japan, Japanese delay public health safety information. The list could go on and on and on. I can't speak for you, but I am wondering why our government actually pays these agencies portions of my taxes. <laughs> well, what is money now? The situation is indeed a cataclysm of lies, deceit, and fraud. At the highest branches of our government, Though you may be speculative of my claims, there, these are key supporting factors in my argument that the current situation in Japan is so alarming that calling it an ELE, extinction level event, is actually becoming an understatement. An important issue you need to consider is an event similar to this one unfolded 25 years ago in Chernobyl. This too was an event where the corruption and information led to massive public health scandals, death, and contamination of the planet. The significant issues that lie ahead have postulated past their acceptability. Mankind has limited time to deal with the situation, as the current status of the failure reactors is so severe that the rising in temperature to the slightest degree will be the last straw, the tipping of the scale, the end of the line. What once was a facetious, a factitious scenario only attributed to Hollywood movies and great novels is indeed the reality we are facing. We are truly looking at the most apocalyptic situation of biblical proportion that mankind has ever faced. The amounts of nuclear fuel present in Fukushima Daiichi dwindle the now abandoned, forever contaminated nuclear wastelands of Chernobyl. In a very, very crude reality, you should be preparing mental, mentally for the challenges that you and your loved ones will be facing. Radiation has already begun wreaking havoc across our globe. The levels are bioaccumulating in our food, our water, and our entire environment. Bioaccumulation 
means that the radiation which was being downplayed as minuscule amounts is in fact growing in size is past human's integrity to refract. We are certainly headed to an unknown frontier, one where Tyvek suits and gas masks are the new essentials and survival. If you are waiting for your government to tell you this, think again. I would advise you to take a deeper look into seeking the information that your government is not telling you. After all, they have this data, do they not? I didn't get the memo, did you? You have to take into consideration that the President of the United States' only public address on the Fukushima nuclear crisis to date was in fact a bold-faced lie. It would be a good idea for you to now take into consideration that the very top experts of nuclear, environmental, and radiological sciences are on the United States advisory, that the calculable distance from Japan versus the radiation speed and height in the planet's jet stream isn't a miscalculable figure. Thus my conclusion. I would stop wasting your time wondering when they are planning on telling you the truth. After all, I just did. They indeed have the data and could easily dispute the claims I have made. We are facing a nuclear holocaust. I would start wondering how you are planning to survive. Dispute me all you would like. Prove me wrong. Now there lies the challenge. Stay informed. Educate yourself. Watch the movie The Road. In all reality, this is an event that will unfold. This is not a matter of if, this is a matter of when. In the meantime, find comfort in being prepared as best you can. Be prepared mentally as well. You are already ahead of the curve for paying attention and asking questions. Keep calm <laughs> and remain focused so that in the event you do find yourself living in a post-apocalyptic nuclear situation, you have tools and training for survival. Learn about the common known types of nuclear radiation, such as beta, gamma, and alpha. Learn how they affect you internally and externally. Learn how to protect and shield yourself from it. Mass will stop any radiation, though the amount of mass in quantity must be able to provide enough protection to support a contamination-free environment. The denser the mass, the better. Think lead, metal, concrete, etc. Six feet should be sufficient to stop gamma radiation. Download a copy of the following to a laptop. Charge the battery and keep it in your emergency kit at all times. Uh, Google Earth, a survival guide, a fallout guide, a text document from Wikipedia. I'll try to figure out what these are. Labeling, types of radi from radiation, radiation exposure charts, and a radiation converting chart. This way, in an emergency, you have written materials and guides on hand to help you survive. Also, it would be helpful to even create a radiation jumpsuit so that you can move around freely if you find yourself in a dangerous situation. Nuclear fallout guides are a great place to start, by the way. I suggest you start your adventure by reading this article. It's a few pages of everything you really need to know. Print a backup of this one. Call this the New Bible. Link to... Well, there's links. Let's check them out later. The situation, may I remind you, could get very ugly. I assume without a doubt it will. There's no shame in being aware. Stay alert and don't waste time. If you want to be prepared, do so intelligently. Many of my friends have told me I shouldn't worry about this situation. They are certainly misinformed. I will admit no shame in treating it with respect. the respect it deserves. It truly is thus far the biggest tragedy to ever occur on the planet in humanity's wake. I will also remind you, TEPCO does not have a plan. <laughs> well, this is true. If your toilet was overflowing for hours and you did not fix it, the situation still gets worse. It rots the floor, then it molds, rots your support beams, etc. And if you dropped a deuce and, every, and everyone would literally faint if they went in to fix it. Oh. Sorry. Well, that's the point there. If you don't fix it, I just demonstrated how the situation will continue to slowly and slowly get worse. So here's my point. Fukushima is the toilet. People are not fainting from the smell. They are dying. The floor and so on are the walls in which nuclear fuel will so slowly conquer and overcome until you lose your house. TEPCO has demonstrated that there's no sufficient way to end that said chain reaction. Thus, your toilet just totaled your house. So it's really up to you on how you feel you should be re reacting right now. Before, 
before you're sitting at home reading and are forced to deal with the shit. Whoa. Well. Yeah, it's also time to get right with your God. And then deal with the situation at hand. I'm not sure what I think. But I think that everything he says is possible. Anybody got any ideas? Let me know.